Thank you very much, Samnath. Um, I'm Kenneth, and I'll be talking today about uh, the graph courses, the uh, founding, the vision, and a bit of our progress so far. So data-driven decisions save lives. This is a lot of, we've, a lot of what we've heard today. Data-driven policy saves lives. Data-driven programs save lives. This was very clearly demonstrated over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, where we saw uh, in real time how data from surveillance studies on cases and deaths gave us a sense of who was most vulnerable. We saw how data from epidemiological modeling helped us understand how to flatten the epidemic curve in order to avoid overwhelming healthcare systems. Uh, data from clinical trials helped us understand how we could treat a disease and also how we could prevent disease with vaccines. Now, COVID-19 is just one of many examples of diseases where data-driven policy and data-driven programs can really help to save lives and reduce unnecessary suffering. And this is something that is increasingly recognized. There's progress in collecting data, collecting public health data across the many countries. But we still have challenges, challenges in data management and challenges in translating data into insight and policy. This is something you've heard a lot uh, today. These challenges are particularly severe in many low and middle income countries. And we've also talked about uh, solutions that we're building to this. My colleague Flavio has told you about the Epigraph Hub uh, tool set, which helps us you to connect and manage uh, real world epidemiological data sets. Now we're going to tell you about the Graph Courses, which is a platform and set of courses to train a generation of uh, health data analysts. So why are we building the Graph Courses? Well, in our work with WHO Afro, and as you've heard from Benito as well, there is, in many cases, a, a scarcity, a dearth of uh, programmatically trained health data scientists in many low and middle income countries. But we also observe that there's a large pool, there's a rich pool of potential analysts. Many of these countries have large young populations. There's increasing access to computers and internet, increasing interest in software and data. And so this is a population that's really ready for quick upskilling with targeted courses, not necessarily traditional uh, master's degrees uh, or uh, long courses of that sort, but targeted courses that really hone in on uh, the required skill sets. But there are still bottlenecks that are preventing these uh, potential analysts from uh, upskilling to become uh, efficient health data scientists. Bottlenecks like uh, what Chigiri Amarachi here uh, describes. She works in the HIV key populations program in Nigeria. She mentions how accredited courses from reputable institutions are usually ridiculously expensive. Or uh, Murdo, uh, who works in hospital administration in, uh, in India, but is trying to learn uh, health data science. But she talks about how many existing courses lack a practical hands-on experience with uh, projects and data sets. Or uh, Elo Nwosu, uh, my little brother, uh, in secondary school in Nigeria, who I'm trying to push to learn health data science, but talks about how uh, he can't find classmates and teachers to ask questions to. So lack of community built around these uh, online data analysis courses. So what we're trying to do with graph courses is open up this bottleneck and free up uh, uh, that flow so that we can uh, really push this uh, pool of uh, potential analysts to become efficient health data scientists that can drive uh, uh, data-informed uh, policy. Now, in our uh, discussions with folks on the ground, with these potential analysts, we've identified a number of essential features we think are important for creating a successful uh, a training platform. And I'll just give a list of about four here. This is a subset. So these need to be epi-focused. They need to use real-world data from low- and middle-income countries of the kind that folks would actually uh, uh, encounter in their work. They need to be affordable, so we can use a, a combination of volunteers and philanthropic support to reduce the expected uh, uh, cost per student. We need to have a learning community built around the courses, and these need to have some sort of accreditation so people feel like they really get uh, some uh, evidence of their work. And we've looked across the landscape of existing solutions. We've looked across uh, data science platforms, the higher ed MOOC platforms, uh, R4EPI books, and data, uh, general data science books, and we feel like there are still important gaps. And this is the genesis of uh, what we're trying to build here, uh, the graph courses. So now I'll give you a very quick uh, platform overview, just uh, first some screenshots uh, from the platform. You can uh, log in at, uh, or sign up at thegraphcourses.org to see some of this. Um, these are little demos. So you can see what a lesson structure looks like, 
there's a video and a, some text, of course. Um, we have, uh, you can have, we've set up a system where you can practice code in your R console, as you see there, the quizzes and assessments, and uh, general progress tracking. You can see what the user interface around progress tracking looks like there. And we have lots of community features. So here you have an example of a screenshot from a groups page. You can see a Lagos R meetup and a Nairobi R meetup. And uh, of course, uh, we have user profiles. So this is a really a, a full-featured full uh, social learning platform. And now I'll show you some examples of our video uh, teaching styles. Hello and welcome back. Welcome to a new chapter, Introductory Data Analysis in R. Today, we're going to learn about basic geospatial visualization. We'd like to learn how to use the select function from dplyr. Running this function on the data set will give us this output. A new column called BMI. This same group has a tendency to over-report cases of overweight children. Existem outras configurações que nós podemos fazer, por exemplo, selecionar a resolução temporal. Los puntos verdes indican donde la colección de data ha sido completada. Podemos identificar la intensidad o concentración de esas observaciones en el espacio. L'algorithme va seleccionar las variables. Pour cela, on a besoin d'un modèle statistique de Gaussian multivarié. District 1 and District 2 have a steeper epidemic curve than District 3. So that gives you a sense of what we're building. And now I'll pass over to Hubert, my colleague, to tell you about what we'll actually be teaching in this platform. What courses are we going to be offering? So with the uh, seed funding from the WHO HQ, so we are going, we are, actually we are developing uh, three courses which will be available by July 2022. So it include the introduction to our uh, data analysis with our uh, further data analysis and introduction to the graphic uh, epigraph hub, which you have already heard about. By September 2022, we're going to have two additional courses focusing on epidemiology, so including the introduction to epidemiology and the practical statistics for epidemiology. And these have been funded by WHO and the CDC Foundation. We actually have got a few other courses in mind uh, in the pipeline. And what we're doing here today is to ask for some support you know, to develop this into reality. So these courses, uh, you can see it on, on this slide here. So which leads to our long-term vision. So what do we actually want to get out from this? So we really want to do a, create a suite of courses that cover the entire life cycle of evidence-based public health practice, uh, all the way from data collection, data visualization, statistical analysis, data interpretation, and to data reporting. And all of these are anchored on the epidemiological principles. We would also like you know, to create courses on the, um, the policy side, which will be the turning the evidence into policy, the implementation, and the evaluation. But of course, this would be further downstream uh, in the pipeline. So who are the people you know, going to deliver such vision? So the graph courses are jointly conceived by the, uh, the colleagues here at the Institute of Global Health at the University of Gen Geneva and the Oxford Population Health at the University of Oxford. So we have got expertise across diverse topics in epidemiology and health data science, including implementation research, advanced analytics, clinical trials, large-scale observational studies, and biobanks. Between us, we're not just having a track record of research excellence. We also have excellent track record of teaching as well. So between us, we've got three very successful master courses. These courses taught by world leading experts they're in, in person or online. And we've got lots of uh, teaching staff with um, multiple uh, teaching accolades. And between us, we have already trained over 500 graduates from different parts of the world. And these people, they're already applying their skills that they've learned from the course in conducting epidemiological analysis to real world data. And these are the examples of the student publications showcasing the diversity of the data and the topics 
that have been working on. Not just us, you know, we are working on the graft causes. We have been supported by the very strong global health community network around the world, in the academia, in the government, and NGOs. So we are very well equipped to deliver such vision in capacity building. Now I'm going to hand over to my colleague Jennifer, who will be telling you more about the delivery of the courses. Thank you. So how will these courses be delivered? So we've seen an example of the platform that Ken A presented to you, and this is going to form the first delivery model. Everything that you've seen from the graph courses so far, the videos, the quizzes, the community, that will be online for self-paced courses. What this means is that students can come and they can enroll at any time and they can do the material at their own pace. And with these courses, we have an unlimited capacity for student numbers. Right? But we can take this delivery, this teaching even further. So what we also propose to do is we want to do guided live cohorts. And what this means is that the experts in the graph network will take 20 to 30 students at a time over three months and lead them through the different courses with weekly online tutorials. I'm coming from Oxford and I know that tutorials are the gem of our education system. And we want to share that with you because tutorials really consolidate the learning, they challenge the learning and they take it deeper. Okay, so we know it's effective. And the third part we want to do is we want to build custom bespoke training. Okay? And we're going to be aiming this at government agencies, ministries of health, companies, and NGOs. And this, and this is really a gem of what we're proposing. Because with customized bespoke training, we can work with you to co-create a training program based on your research priorities. Okay, what are you interested in researching? Are you interested in researching the measles outbreak? Okay, we can help de develop the analyses and the reports for you. Are you interested in looking at the rising burden of hypertension in your community and what the consequences of that might be? We can work with you as well to generate that evidence and interpret that evidence and act on that evidence. And a real, a real part, a key part of this customized training is using Epigraph Hub, which is this tool presented already that automates the analyses, automates a lot of the data visualization so you can start doing the analyses already. It's, it's one less barrier. This tool of Epigraph Hub is at your disposal and we will show you how to harness the potential. The last thing I want to say about the customized group training is that this is going to come with long-term mentoring and support. Right? And the real aim of long-term mentoring and support is to train the trainers. Okay? If we really want to increase capacity, we want to work to create local trainers and health data science that can continue the training in the, in the community going further. This is how you make an impact in capacity building, by training the trainers. And with this third part of the model, that is really what the ultimate aim is going to do. Okay, so how do we fund this? How are we going to fund this, this ambitious program? Well, first we've got to create the courses. And as it was already mentioned, we have 11 courses planned. The first five have been seed funded, and those are going to be rolled out later this year. Okay. And for the rest of the other six courses, we're going to need some help with contributions and funders. Now, in terms of the three models that I've presented, the first one, once we get the courses builded, built, this is just going to take very low cost maintenance in order to keep these courses going further. A couple dollars per student will help us take this unlimited capacity of students through the self-paced courses. What about the guided live cohorts? Okay. Well, we're proposing a self-sustainable fee-based model. One pays for two. We'll calibrate the fees so that one student that's coming who can afford to pay the fees, the fees will, from them will help fund a student who's unable to pay the fees. So by using this type of model, we'll really be able to bring students from low and middle income settings to go through the guided life cohorts for free. And also this, this model can sustain itself going forward. And with the customized group training, initially our plan is to support this with grants. We've been building partnerships and networks over the last couple of years, particularly with ministries of health, where we can go in and create some of this customized training. After that, we're proposing again this fee-based model, one pays for two. If a group comes in and wants customized training and they can pay the fee, then we can use the income from that to then bring a group through who can't afford to pay the fee. And again, this helps with capacity in low income settings. Okay. And there's more information on our brochure about these funding models. Okay, so four-year targets. What's going to be the impact of these courses? Well, as we said, we can have unlimited capacity on the self-paced courses. We're aiming to get 20,000 students enrolled in these courses by the end of four years. In terms of the guided life cohorts, we're aiming to take 1,000 students through the guided life cohorts over four years. And for the bespoke training, 
we think we have, we know we have the capacity to do 20 customized projects. So this is our dream, but we just need your help to get there. Because bringing it back to the ultimate vision, once we have all these students going through our cohorts, we're going to be generating the next generation of health data researchers. And once we do that, these new researchers can start helping target and making progress on preventing premature mortality from these leading causes of death around the globe. Together, we want to start training new researchers to start generating evidence-based practice to build healthier, safer communities. So in wrapping up, so what are we looking for? Well, the first is users. So if you've been interested in anything that we've been presenting today on the Graph Network and the Grass Courses, sign up at thegraphcourses.org. You will get an update later this year as the first five courses are deployed. Okay, course contributors, are you, if, are you interested in contributing to the Graph Courses? That's great, come join the team. And we're also looking for partners and funders to donate towards this cause that we're working towards. You can reach out at contribute at thegraphnetwork.org. There's also more information in the brochure and we'll be sending an email out with these, with these details later on. So in summary, okay, public health data science has a huge potential for return on investment. We know that data decision, data driven decisions save lives. Right, but we need affordable, high-quality, EPI-based training, particularly in low- and middle-income settings. So what we're, pr we're proposing here with the Graph Courses and the EPI Graph Hub is we're going to fill this need, but we do need your, some, your support along the way to do this. So together, let's train the next generation of leaders in health data science. Thank you. Thank you.